Hello everybody, this is Commander Henry McIver with Solitary Sellsword Incorporated. In this video I wanted to pull back the shroud and show you some of the design elements uh, and concepts that went into putting together Throne of Games 2.0. In my previous video I demonstrated the functional aspects of it from the front end. So in this one I wanted to pull back the privacy screen and show you the Frankensteinian madness uh, that went into cobbling this thing together into a functional rig. The bulk of the components are next level racing, uh, which worked very well. In hindsight, uh, considering how this design eventually evolved and came together, I may have gone with something else uh, if I had to do it all over again, just because it would have made it a few things simpler. But I'm not going to knock the next level racing stuff, and I'm not going to recommend another product over top of them, because uh, the monitor stand, the, the uh, steering wheel stand, the chair, all of it is very solid very robust, very rugged, and it's handled a lot of punishment. I've drilled a lot of holes into this thing that was never designed to have, and I'm using it in a way that was never designed to function, and it's working exceptionally well. So hats off to Next Level Racing. They did a really good job with their product, and it really came through for me. So that being said, uh, I want to point out we've got the Next Level Racing chair here. It is bolted to the floor uh, to increase the effectiveness of the butt kicker that's bolted on underneath. And it would have been easier to make the chair move back and forth rather than make everything else move back and forth. But eventually, uh, funding permitting, I would like to put an X-Level Racing uh, chair shaker underneath this. And with that being the case, I thought it was best to have a design where the chair was stationary and it did not move in any way because I didn't want those moving parts to potentially be in the way of the, share, of the chair shaker. So that meant everything else had to move. And it didn't have to move, but I really wanted it to move. Because as you can see, with it all closed up here, there is no room to get in and out of this thing. You would have to be a contortionist or some sort of levitationist to get out of this once it was closed up. So it was really helpful if it could move out and open up to allow a person to get in and out of the rig. It's also just really cool, you know, with uh, your spaceships and your sci-fi stuff, you always see the... Uh, the pilots, you know, the, the cockpit closing in on them, or like you know, the Christopher Nolan Batman's, how he, he kind of dives and like moves down inside of the Batmobile deeper when he's doing like his super cool targeting stuff. It's just a really neat effect, and it was something that I really wanted uh, to work into this if I could. And it turns out I was able to uh, very effectively and very well. So the next part, uh, the, ma the next major component, is the next level racing triple monitor stand. And it's hard, I know it's all black on black, but that's the monitor stand here. Coming across here, and over here, and down over there. Now the original full stand has two other feet. On either side, there's a foot that comes off at an angle here. And up here, there's another piece of metal that attaches and extends quite a ways out so that you can have large uh, monitors wrapping around uh, for racing sims and whatnot. Same thing on the other side. There'd be another foot where the subwoofer and butt kicker are at kicking off. I took those feet off and I also took off the extensions here. I did it partially because I just needed a smaller footprint. It was taking up too much floor space, but also because I knew the entire rig would need to move and the extra feet significantly complicated things. And I didn't really need them, so I took them off. Now Next Level has a monitor stand that uh, bolts in to the wheel stand somehow, but I didn't think it was big enough for what I needed and I couldn't find it. Uh, I ordered most of this stuff right during the coronavirus madness, the first wave, and a lot of products, uh, not just Next Level, but a lot of products were hard to find or unavailable. So. I went with what I could get, which was the triple monitor stand, and it worked great. I do want to point out that my side monitors actually are not attached to, well, they are, but not directly to the triple monitor stand. I've bought uh, secondary vertical monitor mounts and mounted them that way. I did that for two reasons, partially because... Uh, this wasn't stable enough without the legs, and the monitors wouldn't stay in place. So I needed something that was a little more sturdy. But the other reason is because I eventually planned to change out this 
center monitor. Right now it's the 34 inch Samsung, uh, I'm sorry, Acer Predator monitor. Later this year, first to next year, I want to change this out for a, a Samsung Odyssey G9 49 inch ultra curved. Assuming I can afford that, once that happens, there won't be room for these side monitors where they're currently at. I'll either have to lose them completely or I'll have to move them horizontally, flip them 90 degrees horizontally over top of the larger 49 inch monitor, at which point I will have to have these. So I went ahead and mounted them this way right off the bat uh, to future proof my design for my intentions down the road. The third piece is the next level racing wheel stand, which is here. This diagonal piece coming up. All these platforms around here for the pedals, around on the side. That's what all of the horizontal plates and the steering wheel are uh, strapped to. It's what all the arms come off of for the HOTUS, uh, the orb weaver. All of these things are connected into the wheel stand rather than the monitor stand. Now Next Level's intention was for this to be adjustable up and down and for it to fold up and uh, move out of the way when it wasn't needed. However, I needed something uh, that was connected in one piece uh, with the monitor stand. This is where, again, hindsight being 2020, if I'd known it was going to come together this way when I bought everything, I might have gone with a different option. Because in order to make this work, I had to buy uh, pieces of plate, I think it's two inch plate at Lowe's, drill some holes, and get it all bolted together. I didn't get it exactly square. It's off just a little bit, but not enough to matter. But it did make things a little more complicated. If I had had a rig that was all one piece to begin with, that would have been a little bit easier. But I didn't. And it worked out fine as it is, so I'm not going to complain. So the monitor stand with everything strapped to it, the wheel stand with everything strapped to it, it all comes down and it's all attached to these 16 millimeter linear rails with these pillow block uh, bearing casters underneath. And that's what makes it slide back and forth. Now, when I originally put this together, these pipe clamps were a stopgap temporary measure. I never intended for them to be the end of the design. I had an idea for custom making some plates, uh, tapping and uh, you know drilling and tapping some holes and doing it a little bit differently. But uh, I ran out of time. Honestly, I ran out of a little bit of a motivation. I was I was just tired of messing with it because I don't really have the tools or the workshop I need to be fabricating metal parts. It's very difficult for me to do. Uh, they never work out as well as I would like, uh, partially because of lack of tools, partially due to lack of skill. And rather than putting all the time and effort for something that was just not going to be quite right and aggravate me anyway, these clamps were working perfectly well, so I left them. Maybe someday, eventually, you know, when I'm a, a world-class CNC operator, maybe I'll, I'll fabricate something else. But for now, they work. And as they say, if it's not broke, I'm not going to fix it. Plus, you know, I mean, maybe I'm just saying this to soothe my my OCD a little bit, but they look a little steampunky, and, I, and I'm okay with that. I can handle that. Uh, the other thing we have here, while we're talking next level racing, uh, this entire section here is kind of uh, jury rigged up a little bit. Let me open this up a bit so you can see. So pure next level racing, you've got two options here for the wheel stand. You can have the steering wheel mounted exactly as it is with no desk space on either side. Or you can put on their uh, next level racing desktop, which is a very heavy duty, heavy gauge uh, piece of steel, which is much larger. It comes out to about here, out to here. It's a very large desktop, all things considered. And I bought one, thinking it's what I needed. However, it didn't work out because it was so long, I couldn't get the monitor stand to come in as close as I wanted. It got stopped back here a ways. 
so the desktop was a no-go. It had to leave. However, I needed some horizontal space for things I wanted to mount on either side of the wheel. I also needed additional horizontal space for the orb weaver and the mouse. See, these plates actually stop right here. This platform is what the, the race, I'm sorry, the flight pack is for. You, you buy that separate, the next level flight pack, and it gives you these platforms and these arms that attach in. But there's only enough for a HOTUS and a stick. So I bought a second uh, racing pack and cannibalized the plates out of it. And that's what we have here and here. And I also drilled some holes and put some plates here and here. So I'd have something of a desktop to put some of my components on. These, even though they were pretty sturdy without any type of support, I wanted these rock solid. I didn't want there to be any kind of wobble or give to these. So I took some more pieces out of the next level flight packs. Uh, I think they were originally intended to be mounted into the chair. If you wanted to put the throttle and joystick and whatnot in the chair, they attach down into here and give you some options for raising platforms up to mount. But I put them here and made them into legs and put little casters on the bottom. And then I built in this track for the caster so that it can't wobble back and forth too far. So everything rolls forward, these roll forward, and they got this little monopod on each side that holds everything up and holds it in place. It works really well. I was actually surprised at uh, how well it turned out. The last part, last couple pieces I guess, uh, when I initially had everything wired together, all the cables, and there was a lot of, as you can see, a lot of cables, they were all coming off the side, and I had the PC actually off to the side. But there was a lot of wear and tear on the cables. Every time we'd move backwards or forwards, those cables would bind up a little bit. They would move around a little bit. It was shifting things around, and it really just wasn't working out. So I built a platform. It's nothing fancy. It's just plywood with some casters. And I attached it to the back end of the uh, wheel stand. And I put the PC and my UPS on it. So the only thing coming off the PC are a couple of power cords and the uh, audio cables for the speakers. Everything else is contained and routed on the uh, monitor stand. We also have the linear actuator here. Uh, this isn't the one I originally had in my design. It's a little bit higher than what I originally designed. Which is a little bit of a problem because now the uh, the metal here isn't high enough to clear. It catches right here. So I can't move this thing as far back as I originally designed or intended. But it still opens enough uh, to allow me to get in and out of it very easily. I just have to be a little careful whenever I'm using it to make sure I turn it off in time so I don't shear the actuator off and scalp it when I open it. It's a minor thing. I'll probably eventually change it for a lower profile actuator, but for now, it works okay. The other thing that's important to point out is the actuator is plugged into the UPS. So if there would be a, a power outage or whatnot, I don't get stuck in this thing. I have enough juice on this to open the rig back up and get out of it before the power shuts down off the battery. And I think that's about it uh, in terms of the major components and how they're put together. Um, Oh, the, uh, the keyboard, while we're just talking about pieces, I cobbled this together uh, out of pieces of an Erector set, some extra pieces out of the next level racing stuff. Uh, these were reinforcing struts for something or the other, I forget exactly what, uh, but I used them for this. And this was an arm uh, for a, uh, some sort of a, a tablet mount. And I got it all hooked in here together so that it swivels out, brings the keyboard out of the way as needed. I originally had a, uh, a wired 
uh, mechanical gaming keyboard attached in there. But I took that out because it, routing the cable is just too much of a pain. I've got my fans mounted here. Nothing fancy. They're just zip tied here. I have them bolted here onto the platforms. They all come back into a USB hub. I need to snap those uh, gear ties off too. I thought I did that. Anyway, I have a few extra ports here for a few extra things that need power. Uh, there's no data to this. It's just a power provider for the different USB things. In this case, the fans. And it's all wired in to that inline switch uh, right there. You know, click it on, power goes to the USB, turns everything on. Eventually, I want to have a, uh, a power console where all these are individually powered with individual switches. But that's later down the road. Uh, that's the light that flashes. It's just a magnetic base, uh, 12 volt strobe light that I got plugged into the second output of the uh, actuator controller. This controller will put out power to two actuators. I only have one. The problem I was running into uh, was I'd move the thing all the way forward and the actuator stops working because the limiter switch turns it off but power was continuing to flow from the, the controller to the actuator and it was burning something up. I went through two actuators before I figured out what the problem was. So I put that light to the second power output. So if the light's on, that means there's power going to the actuator as well. So the light serves as a reminder uh, to, to click the, the power button and turn the actuator off to keep me from burning it up. I do believe that is it. That's all the major components in terms of the structure of the thing, and how it works. I don't think I missed anything. So I hope that clears up uh, some of the, the thinking and design or, or lack thereof <laughs> that uh, that went into this because uh, you know while I, I did have a general concept of what I wanted it to do and how I wanted it to, to work, I didn't really know for sure how it was all going to go together. There's a lot of improvisation. There is a lot of improvising and uh, jury rigging uh, that went into this, but the end result is highly functional and highly enjoyable. So, uh, and I had a lot of fun, even though it was frustrating in parts. I had a lot of fun building it. Uh, if you have any questions about how I did it, uh, how it was put together, the components that went into it, that sort of thing, uh, please drop a comment on the video, and I'll get back in touch with you as soon as I can. Thanks a lot, and I hope you've enjoyed the video.